Hey guys, welcome to another Sonically Sound video. Today we're going to go over compression. Compression is a really simple tool that really helps in your mix. Basically what compression does is it reduces the dynamic range of a sound source. What that means is it makes the quieter bits louder and the louder bits quieter. Basically bringing the general mix together. So if you're struggling with something that's sounding too loud and too quiet, you don't have to push the fader up and down or automate the volume. You can just use the compression and that does it for you. Today we're going to show you on a vocal to start with. Uh, this vocal has a lot of quiet bits and loud bits. I mean you can see by the waveform but we'll just give it a quick play and have a listen. I keep my love a red, red rose and it was We take a stroll around the block, but that wasn't fast enough. You said, I can't get close to real emotion till I feel myself a body in motion. So you can see there, he's quite quiet in the verse, but when it starts to reach the pre chorus chorus, he gets a lot louder. So what we're going to do is we're going to open compressor. So what you do is you tap there go down to dynamics and you'll see the compressor the standard compressor works just fine now you see it's opened up to this page the platinum digital now it's perfectly fine you can use this one um, all of these basically bring up different choices of compressor um, you want to try them all out have a listen see how it sounds um, before just going on what someone else has said I use studio FET but be sure to listen to it yourself now before we get into any detail, what you'll need to know are the two main controls, which is threshold and ratio. Now, threshold tells the compressor at what level should the compressor begin to work. So if the vocal is going over, what's it set to? If it's going over minus 20 dB, the compressor should start working. That's basically how it works, and you can set it to whatever. Now, how much it reduces... Um, the level that's over the threshold comes down to the ratio so basically what it does is it tells it by how much it should reduce it so you can see here it's I can set it to 2 2.0 to 1 basically what that means is anytime the sound source is 2 decibels over the threshold it will push it down to 1 so that's quite soft because it's only taking it down by 1 decibel however if you take it up to something like five to one that means that every time it's five decibels over the ratio it's going to bring it down to one so that's obviously a lot more extreme um, so you need to make sure that you're not doing it too extreme or too softly you need to make sure you're doing it right and a lot of that comes down to practice but you'll get the hang of it now here you can see what is called a VU meter it says meter there in the grayed out bit but basically what it's doing is it's showing you how much the compressed signal is being compressed in DB so when it starts playing it will kind of go around there but we'll get to that once um, we actually start using the compressor the other feature is graph here basically what that does is it shows you two different graphs so it shows you this little graph here and this comes up with some waveforms once it starts working we'll see that in a minute um, but here you can you'll be able to see that there is a white circle that will jump up here that is the sound source now these two axes here, this one is input signal in dB, so that's never going to change, that's always going to stay the same. And this is output signal, that's what we're changing. So if I change the ratio to be 0 or 1 to 1, you can see that if the white line or the white dot goes up here, so if it gets to 30 decibels, in input signal it's going to be 30 decibels out as well because nothing's changing it's just a straight slope however if I start to change it to 3 to 1 you can see it's going up there going up there and then it's slightly being reduced it's not going straight up anymore so it's not it's just about at the loudest if it's 0 dB on here it's getting to minus 10 dB on the output level now an important thing to do as well on this particular compressor is turn off the auto gain it basically makes everything louder and you don't want to do that if you want to make something louder you have other tools for it you don't want to leave it in the in the hands of the compressor so first let's just give this a play and our, you can see the um, the graph the graph that's going on here and the and the, the graph here I keep my love 
red, red rose And it was tick-tock, tick-tock I thought we'd take a stroll around the block But that wasn't fast enough so you can see there that this is moving up and down up to the hill and basically during that bit you could see it was slightly being compressed and you could see it on this graph as well and this bit here which shows how many decibels it's being reduced. We don't really want to reduce the quiet bits though. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the threshold um, and then basically just keep in in increasing the threshold while you play until you start to see the quiet bits not being not going over this little hill here or not being compressed um, and then the loud bit should be getting compressed so let's have another listen I gave my love a red red rose and it was tick tock tick tock I thought we'd take a stroll around the block but that wasn't fast enough you said I can't get close to real emotion till I feel myself a body in motion so let's get so you can see there when it starts to get really loud uh, it's starting to be compressed which is what we want we we don't want to over exaggerate it if you do it too much it might sound um, fake or it will just sound bland because there's no loud and quiet bits you kind of want um, a bit of interest in your vocals and in all your tracks and basically from there you just keep listening to other bits um, I mean in this particular track the guy gets really loud over here and when the song hits hard with the drums and guitars the world explodes to the great divine um, and you can see there it's reducing it a lot. Um, you can also check the output and input levels here. So there's input gain here. So that's going to show what the input level is in decibels. And the output level should be smaller, should be lower um, in certain bits. So in the bits that we're compressing, this should be a completely different level. Um, and then you know it's working. There are two other controls on a compressor that um, aren't the most important, but you definitely need to know what they do um, if you want to start experimenting and playing with them. So, attack. Attack basically means how long until the compressor starts working. So once the sound level goes over the threshold, how long until the compressor begins to work. This is set to 10 milliseconds, and that's quite good. Um, you might think that's really fast, but it actually works. It basically just means that it doesn't go in straight away because if you had it on zero and it started to be compressed right away you might hear a click sound or it just be it wouldn't be subtle whereas this gives it a subtle enough fade in release is basically the opposite so once the sound source goes below the threshold again how long until the compressor stops working because once again if you have it on zero and it just immediately stops working it will sound unnatural so you might want to put it on something I mean this is set to 48 milliseconds which is subtle enough, but it works. Um, the final control you can see here that is really important is um, makeup. Basically, it just boosts the general level of everything, um, anything that um, isn't being compressed, basically. So that that's how I do it for a vocal, um, because you know a vocal's got a lot of loud and quiet bits. Um, drums is normally a different story. So again, this is all really stylistic as well. You can't, um, there isn't one way of compressing drums because they're so different um, stylistic choices as well. Um, if you've got something like a heavy metal set of drums, you might want to compress it a lot harder than if you've got some jazz set, obviously, because they're definitely different in dynamic range. And this is quite a rocky song. So what I've done is I, I've compressed these. Um, and if we open up the graph, you can see I'm working it quite hard at about four to one, um, which just means it's kind of it's kind of just sounds a bit more punchy and stuff. So what I what I recommend, and this is a tip that a lot of people do, and it's something that I like to do on drums if you really want it to sound punchy, is individually compress each um, drum. Don't don't do the cymbals or the hi hat because um, they don't need to be compressed because they're quite they're quite um, dynamic. Um, and you, you want to keep it that way. But yeah, so I'm working them quite hard. I'm doing them differently, though. I'm not doing them all on four to one. I'm doing them all differently. And then what I then do is I do something called parallel compression. So if you're wondering what parallel compression is, basically, as it suggests, it's a compressor that's working parallel to the output signal. So you see here on my little um, group, my stack here called drums, 
I've got two sends. So one's a reverb, and one, if I select it, is called para for parallel compression. And it's only got a compressor on it. Basically, what it means is, is I can have a drum output. So I've got my drum output here, but then I've also got an output that's being really hardly compressed because you don't want to compress your drums really hard and only have that coming out because that will sound unnatural. But if you mix it in with the more dynamic sound, it will have a better blend. So if I open this up, you can see here that I am working it at six to one, which is quite harsh. And the threshold is at 23, which for drums is quite, quite harsh because drums are, you know, quite loud. So they're going to get way over 20 dB, no doubt. And so basically, it's just giving it more punch. Um, it just means that the drums drive a bit more, but you're not compromising the whole drum sound. Um, so you're just getting a bit of it enough that it really pushes through. Basically, when it comes to compressing guitars and um, bass guitars, basically, it's the same thing, but you're probably having to work with, um, like, s sometimes, you know, people will be using amps, sometimes they'll be going straight through, and a lot of people will be using their own pedals, so sometimes you may not need to compress the uh, guitars as they'll be compressing their own sound through their compression pedals, so you may not need to worry about it, but it's always worth, if you do see that it's getting a lot louder and a lot quieter, it's still worth doing. Now stuff like keys, it can get quite, um, quite tricky, so piano for instance, obviously um, if you mic up an acoustic piano, that's going to be very dynamic if you're doing quiet bits and loud bits, and here you can kind of see it's basically playing the same stuff, it's playing stabs and it's playing chords. And so it's probably fine, but then here you can just about see that there's some quiet stuff going on. And so I would recommend maybe compressing it, but not too much, because um, you don't want to get rid of that really genuine dynamic sound from the um, from the piano. Um, if you've got electronic keys, which we don't have here, um, you definitely want to uh, make sure that there is some compression in case they haven't got anything through their system. So yeah, I hope this video um, was helpful for you guys. I hope that you got something out of it and it helped you. Uh, if you got any questions about compression, put them in the comments below so that I can maybe answer them for you or if there's enough questions on the same topic, I'll do another video. Uh, yeah, but just be sure to give this a thumbs up, a like, a subscribe. And yeah, you guys have a, have a good week.